I want to record the school on. Okay, chapter 8, communication. Alright, so what is the learning outcome for this chapter? Okay, upon completing students will be able to understand the following. What is the communication? Okay, the process of communication and then formal and informal organizations communication, barriers to effective communication and how to overcome okay how to overcome the barriers and that is categories of interpersonal communication. Okay so let's look one by one okay what is communication okay communication is the process okay the word process means that uh, interaction okay? of sending and receiving okay? sending and receiving message okay? sending orang yang menghantar okay? the person that receives the message through verbal or non-verbal okay? for example speech okay? communication can be verbal okay? secara bercakap Dan boleh juga secara non-verbal. For example, smile. Okay? Tanpa keluarkan suara. Okay? Including speech or oral communicating. Okay, ada juga uh, oral communicating. For example, writing and graphical representation. Such as info, graphics, maps and charts. Okay? And sign, signals and behavior. Itu semua adalah termasuk communication verbal non-verbal oral writing okay in graphical method representation pun sama juga that is called communication okay most in most imply communication is said to be the creation and exchange of meaning okay so, kalau ada pertukaran sesuatu message, ah, itu adalah exchanging. Means that exchanging, itu adalah communication. Okay? Communication is also the exchange of information and the expression of feeling that can result in understanding. Okay? So, macam kalau kamu bercakap dengan kawan kamu, okay? ada orang yang balas semula apa yang kamu cakap. Okay? Itu adalah communication. Alright? The process by which message or information is sent from one place or person to another or the message itself. Okay. Selain daripada itu, okay, communication ni ada uh, juga dia dalam uh, contoh kalau kita bagi message dalam WhatsApp or if you message DM, direct message in Instagram. Okay. Itu pun antara salah satu process of communication right so you send okay the person that sent the message and then the receiver will get the message and understand okay about the message right itu adalah communication so let's look at the communication process okay if you look at the uh picture here okay what is the element that includes in the communication process as i mentioned before okay in the communication process we should have the sender okay the sender the person that send the message okay the medium okay for example whatsapp group okay facebook facebook uh, direct message okay instagram tiktok okay so you should have the medium Okay, include uh, uh, what you call uh, email and also the medium, right? And then you should have the person that call the receiver okay, in the communication process. And then you should have the message, okay? And the message, okay, from the sender to the receiver, okay? For example, here, yeah. movie start at nine. Can you drive us? Okay, that is the message that sent by the sender to the receiver. Okay, so after the receiver got the message, and then the receiver will give the feedback. 
okay they have how many elements here one is the sender second is the medium third is the receiver okay the fourth is the message and the fifth the feedback okay if the receiver did not give any feedback so it means that your communication, your communication process is not success okay there is some barriers okay so if you're waiting for the receiver uh, to get uh, to give the feedback okay dah lama tak dapat lagi tak balas pun message okay so maknanya communication process tu ada barriers ataupun ada halangan dia lah okay sebab apa dia tak baca lagi ke receiver tu tak baca lagi ke tak ada internet ke okay that's the barrier ataupun halangan in the communication process so the here the receiver will give the uh, feedback yeah the there by 8 30 so that the sender will get the re the feedback okay the response from the receiver okay that is the communication process in general okay can you understand now it is very easy to understand right Okay, in terms of communication, so every of us doing it okay, in our daily life. Okay, did you have any question about communication process? Okay, later on we will discuss further. Okay, so what is the communication process definition? Okay, so the definition is the term communication process refers to the exchange of information. For example, a message between two or more people. Okay. Not only for it's not ah, uh, bukan sahaja untuk seorang, tapi dia boleh juga kepada ramai orang. Okay. So kalau macam contoh tadi, lebih kepada seorang lah. Okay. Tapi contoh kalau saya WhatsApp dekat dalam group. Okay. Inform our class today what time and then someone is respond to me okay it means that all of you is alert with my uh, message all right for communication to succeed both parties must be able to exchange information and understand each other okay so kalau lah dalam kelas ni we have to also uh, we are doing the communication process right now okay i am teaching you okay so I hope that you will give me the feedback so that the communication process is success. Success, okay? If not, okay, if you are, if you just uh, silent and then uh, tak ada pun nak was and nak nak message dekat dalam box bawah tu, okay, cakap yes, madam, I understand. So that the process of communication will not success. Success, okay? So both parties kena faham, okay, in uh kepada sender and also the receiver. Both parties must understand the message. Okay, if the flow of information is blocked for some reason or the parties cannot make themselves understood, then communication fails. Okay, so macam tadi saya cakap lah, okay, kalau salah satu parties tu dia tak faham and then dia tak dapat feedback. So, communication tu boleh uh, orang kata bergabal, right? So, let's look at the okay, more detail about what is the element in the communication process. Okay, so the first one is sender. Okay. Who is the sender? Communication process begins with the sender who is also Call the communicator or source. Okay, the person that gives the first message. Okay, that is that we call it as the communicator. Siapa yang mulakan dulu? Ah, perbualan tu ataupun sesuatu message tu dihantar oleh siapa yang mulakan dulu itu adalah communicator ataupun source. Alright, kita panggil dia sender. Okay, the sender has some kind of information. A command, a request, question, or idea that he or she wants to present to others. 
tu macam so, saya tadi saya ada uh, command ataupun request okay we will conduct the class start at 9:30 a.m. Okay that is our that is my command to you. Okay so me as a sender or a communicator. Okay I want you to know. Okay nanti saya, saya tak nak. Okay saya ada maklumat ni. Okay saya ada arahan tu. So saya lah yang bertanggungjawab untuk memberitahu kepada kamu lah. Alright. So supaya you all uh, ready for the class and then you are alert. So today we have a class. Uh, something like that. Okay. Message to be received. Must first input the message in a form that can be understood. Such as by the use of a common language or industrial jargon and then transmit it. Okay. So uh, the sender. Okay. Kena. Uh, tulis uh, in uh, what we call it the message this should be uh, understood understood by all the all the receiver okay for example in a group of uh, homegrown student okay i will uh, give the message in english okay because of both of the student is from okay uh, Philippines, for example, okay, Michelle and Richie. Okay, so I write in the English language. Okay, but then for uh, UITM student, okay, most of the all of the student there is uh, Malay, right? So uh, I rather choose to write the message okay, in Malay. Okay, something like that. Okay, so. Apa yang kita nak sampaikan dalam message tu, kena make sure that orang yang kita nak hantar message tu faham apakah maksud. Di sebalik message kita, dia akan transmit kan, encode kan message for and understand okay, what is the behind the message and then transmit it. Okay. Kalau dia tak faham, so it's very difficult for them to transmit it okay, and understand what is the message all about. Okay, so make sure if you are the sender, okay, make sure that the receiver will understand your message very well. Okay, so that is the sender. How about the receiver? Okay, the receiver is the person to whom a message is directed, is called the receiver or the interpreter, right? Rather than we call it as it is uh, as a receiver. Then we also call them as the interpreter. Okay. Who, who the person who will interpret okay. the meaning behind the message. Okay. So to comprehend, okay, the receiver will comprehend the information from the sender. The receiver must first be able to receive the sender's information and then decode or interpret it. Okay. So, for example, if the sender okay, fail to uh, send the message because of the internet, okay, for example, the media is uh, WhatsApp, okay. So then, uh, the receiver, okay, fail to receive okay, the information, and then the communication fail, right? The receiver cannot decode okay, the information to the because of uh, whether the sender medium, okay, there is no internet from the sender or from the receiver itself. Okay. That is the camera and receiver. Is there any question, class? Can you understand? Hello. Can you understand? About the communication, the element of communication. Yes or no? Hello? Is anybody? <laughs> Alright, thank you, Rishab. You all tak ada, tak ada mic ke? Worry ke cakap tu sorang? What's going on with your microphone? It's not function? Okay? Okay ke tak? Uh, okay. Alright, so let's look at another element that is 
the third one is the message. Okay. I'm all down with that. I said, Mama, don't mind. <laughs> Are you mad, Michelle? <laughs> so, never mind. And then after this, we will I look back at my recording. Okay, Risha? Where's Richie? Is there Richie in, in this class? Oh, no. Okay, never mind. Okay, so let's continue for the message. Okay, the message or content is the information. Okay, information that the sender wants to relay to the receiver. Okay, wants to relay to the receiver. Additional subtext can be conveyed through body language. Tone of the voice. Okay, so kadang kadang. Kalau kita tengok, uh, if we choose to do the uh, non-verbal communication, okay, with our body language and the tone of voice pun, bukan non-verbal, tapi lebih kepada informal communication, okay, kita punya message tu, kita boleh sampaikan based on the our body language and also a tone of voice. Okay, for example, if we angry to others. Okay. If we angry to our our sister or brother, okay, what is your body language show? Okay, apa yang body language kamu buat? Maybe cakap pinggang ke, okay, with the with the round eye, okay, and then higher voice, okay, suara yang uh, kuat, uh, that is the that is the sum of the body language, okay. This also uh, interpret a okay? video, so what we call it, it is the message. Okay, we will read the message of the body language and also sort of what. Put all three elements together, sender, receiver and message, and you have the communication process is at its most basic. Okay, contoh kalau you ada, you dengan, dengan orang, contoh you dengan adik, okay, you. You are the sender, the okay, are the receiver. And then what is the message? You want you angry to 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 him or to her okay, because of um, play play in the in your bedroom, for example. Okay, to so, main dekat dalam bilik semara. Okay, message kamu based on your body language and the tone of voice. Okay, itu adalah communication. Okay, that is the basic communication process. Okay, the next, the medium. Okay, I also call the channel. The medium is that is the means by which the message is transmitted. Okay, via through what medium? Okay, through what channels? Okay, the communication is transmitted. Okay, for example, uh, the medium such as emails. Okay, you get the message from the uh, sender. Okay, by email or by call okay, or by Facebook DM, okay, that is the medium to which the message is transmitted. Okay, the channel of the message is transmitted. The text message, for example, are transmit to the medium of cell phones. Okay, that is an example of the medium. Okay, so and then okay after that feedback. Okay, the fifth element feedback. Okay, can someone please read this feedback? Uh, Zafira, please read feedback number five. Please read. Hello, this is Jafira. Where are you? Are you there? Can you? I can. Please read. Number five. Feedback. Tak 
ini mas Farah? Ya, masih tadi. Iya, masih. Okay, thank you. So that is the feedback. Okay. The receiver, okay, sends uh, okay, the message to the sender. Okay, that is the feedback. Okay. So when the receiver sender sender the message, it means that uh, okay, the process communication, okay, is success success. Okay, because of uh. HD because of the uh, sender tu dah dapat feedback daripada uh, receiver okay. so that is the feedback and then other factors so then the six one ada juga factors okay, ataupun elements yang ada dalam communication okay. the communication process isn't always too simple or smooth of of course these elements can affect how information is transmitted Races and implications. Okay, so other factors ni apa yang kita kena tahu dekat dalam communication bukan sahaja ada lima. Okay, so kita ada juga another one factor that we call it as the noise. And okay, we have two other factors. We have two noise and also contact. Okay, yang you all tahu basic uh, process of communication we have five sender. Message, medium, receiver, feedback, and another two is other factors. Okay, yang kita panggil sebagai noise dan juga contact. Okay, noise and contact. What is noise and contact? Okay, noise. This can be any sort of uh, interference. Okay, that affects the message. Being sent, received, or understood. Uh, okay, so noise ni maksudnya dalam uh, in a communication process. Okay, which actually noise is called uh, something yang mengganggu. Okay, yang mengganggu proses communication. Okay? For example, me, okay, teaching you right now. Okay, you are learning from me. Okay, using Google Meet, right? So, what is the noise that read, uh, usually happen? Okay, maybe due to the internet connection. Okay, poor internet connection. Okay, because of uh, the cuaca yang sangat buruk, because of the rainy, okay, and storm out there. Okay, that can impact some people, you know. Uh, communication process itu adalah noise. Okay, other than that, nanti saya terlupa nak charge ni laptop saya. Okay, that is a noise. Okay, lepas tu, in your side, okay, maybe mak tiba-tiba suruh tolong dekat dapur. Okay, for example, like Rachel, kena teman nenek pergi pasar. Okay, that is some noise. Okay, okay yang mengganggu setiap in the communication process. Okay. It can be as literal as static over a phone line, okay, or a radio, or as exotic as this, interpreting a local custom. Okay. Maksudnya, noise ni apa yang interfere ataupun yang apa yang mengganggu process communication system. Alright. That we call it as noise. Alright. Okay, next, context. What is the context? This is the setting and situation. Okay, to other eye. Okay, which communication takes place? Like noise, context. Okay, we can add that. But X context can have an impact on the successful exchange of 
information. Okay. For example, it may have a physical, social, cultural aspect to it. In a private conversation with a trusted friend, you will share more personal information. Okay. Contoh, kalau dengan uh, kawan kita, so kita akan lebih uh, senang untuk uh, meluahkan sesuatu. Okay. The communication, communication process is smooth. Sebab apa? Kita kenal dia, we know each other and we are comfortable with them. Okay. So the communication will go smooth. Okay, but if you are with the foreigner, okay, someone that you are not uh, even know them, ataupun know her, okay, tiba-tiba dia tanya, okay, did you feel comfortable to to communicate with them? Of course not, right? Okay, that is contact. Contact means that boleh expose seorang tu siapa, okay? What else? Contoh kalau kita nak bermesej, uh, kita hantar communication message dekat uh, email, okay, kita tak kenal siapa receiver kita, okay, that is boleh menyebabkan konteks ni menjadi communication kita fail, okay, akan mengganggu proses communication. What else, okay, if we do not know the language of the of the person that you want to communicate with, okay, for example. The person is a Korean girl. Okay, how can we communicate with them? Okay, so the context. Okay, in terms of the different of the culture. Okay, ataupun different of the ah apa tu bangsa ataupun ah apa kata kaum berbeza itu akan menyebabkan barriers ataupun context tu akan menyebabkan Process of communication, kita tak faham bahasa dia, dia tak faham bahasa kita. Okay, process of communication tu akan ada barriers ataupun halangan lah. Some of interference effect, okay, because of the social of culture. Okay. Okay, if you notice of our, okay, current issue, nowadays, okay, regarding the bond or, or jury. Siapa lah dia tengok? Bon, bon apa eh, nama dia tu? Satu festival ataupun upacara daripada Jepun, okay? Bon Odiri, if not mistaken, okay? So, because of uh, because of that, okay, semua orang masih lagi uh, keliru, okay? Sama ada we have, we as a uh, Muslim country, okay? Muslim people can go to celebrate together or not, okay? So that is some of the context of the communication process. Okay, disebabkan oleh different of the context based on the culture, social, social and also uh, religion. Okay, the different of the religion, social and culture yang menyebabkan context communication tu akan terganggu. Okay. Kita boleh faham ya? Okay, how can we define noise and context? So, you can now better that lah. Okay. You can now faham how to differentiate between the noise. Okay. Noise because of the physical um, physical factor. Okay. For example, the line, okay, the internet, okay, the place. Okay, sama ada dia duduk dekat dalam kawasan yang Pedalaman, okay, tak ada coverage. Okay, it's noise. Okay, kalau konteks ni lebih kepada physical, social, religion, culture aspect. Okay, itu differentiation between noise and konteks. Okay. Is there any question regarding konteks and noise class? Ada soalan? Alright, so let's move to formal and informal communication communication. Okay, what is the formal communication? It is result from the organization structure and can run in different direction. Okay. Formal maksudnya ikut kepada organizational structure. Okay, from the CEO, okay. In an organization, you have a uh, 
um, CEO lah sebagai ketua and then go to director. Okay, so the, the information flow from CEO to director and then to head of the department and then employee. Okay, stop. Okay, so itu adalah formal communication. Okay, have four types of dumb work. Okay, formal communication ada empat. Okay, the first one, we call it as dumb work. Okay, dumb work tu maksudnya ke bawah lah. Okay, info tu daripada orang atasan kepada orang bawah. So, that is dumb work. And then upward. Okay, upward pula terbalik. Okay, daripada orang atasan, eh, bawahan, daripada orang atasan. Okay. Horizontal and diagonal. Sekejap lagi kita tengok apa dia. Horizontal maknanya. Maknanya dia apa? Sekejap lagi kita tengok horizontal and also diagonal. Okay, it's a formal. Okay, kalau informal, it based on a random personal contact. Okay, dan the information is okay. Information tak kisahlah. Uh, informal tu maksudnya uh, okay, communicate with your friends. Okay. okay. With your family members. That is informal communication. Okay. Kalau ikut kepada okay, dalam kerja, okay, in your work, usually it is formal communication lah. So, what is downward communication? Downward communication represents the most stereotypical form of formal communication. So, stereotype lah. So, kebiasaan yang every organization will have downward communication okay? from the CEO to director to manager and also to employees by, uh, for example, they communicate using the uh, email, okay? So, as you as a, a student, so you have your own uh, email, right? Okay. Email, college email. The same goes to me, lah. Okay, as a staff, also have an email of the college. So that is the medium of the communication, okay? So the information will be uh, given, information will be separate in the email. Information flows from management level down to lower levels. Okay. It is the most common form of communication. Downward communication including orders and instructions in citizens to borrow or return from us. Okay. Maybe the uh, message is by uh, oral communication, for example, voice recording okay. or written from us. Okay. Maybe a letter, okay. that is the uh, order, some other, uh, apa kata, order or instruction by the higher up level. Okay. For example, report, okay. so me as a lecturer, should, uh, every day should write a report to the CEO. Okay. Emails, okay. later, and manual communication are commonly used that word communication. That we call it as the downward communication. Okay, how about the upward communication? Okay, upward communication contains information which pass from subordinate level up to management and senior levels. Common forms of upward communication include form from employee to manager and above. Report suggestion, after request, instruction, and complaint. Okay, for example, you as a student of complaints about the lecturers, okay, you must submit as a complaint to the, okay, you as a student, okay, submit the complaint to the uh, head of academic uh, manager, for example, and then academic manager will uh, give uh, okay, the report to the UITF, for example, that is the upward communication. Okay, for example, UITF student will uh, fill in the uh, super report, right? Okay, regarding how you feel about the foolish, the lecturers on the subject, especially. 
same goes to homegrown student that will uh, fill in the form in a uh, like SIE report. So student instructor evaluation, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? That is upward communication okay, from the subordinate level okay, until to the up management or senior level. For example, complaints, okay, suggestion, okay, request or instructions. Okay, that is upward communication. Okay, maksudnya daripada level bawah kepada orang atas sana. Okay, contoh, if you have a complaint sebab uh, your local management in your, in your, at your house area, okay, only. Sama juga kita boleh uh, write a report ataupun letter okay, kepada uh, kita punya tu lah kata apa nama dia pihak berkuasa tempatan PBT okay, dia berkaitan dengan apa contoh sampah lambat ambil ke that is uh, the complaint okay that you submit to the higher level authority lah. Okay. So that is the upward communication. Okay. Dari bawah ke atas. Upward lah. Up. Downward ni dari ke bawah. Okay. Dari atas ke bawah. Okay. Downward tu biasanya daripada bos pada anak bawah. Biasanya arahan. Okay. Instruction. Okay. Kena bezakanlah antara downward and itu upward. Alright? Boleh faham downward and upward? Penanya kan? Okay, kalau horizontal pula, dia lebih kepada mendata. Okay, horizontal communication refers to communication between individuals who are at the same or similar levels within an organization but have different areas of responsibility. Okay, for example, manager with Okay, manager department of finance, okay, with the manager of marketing, okay, they want to communicate each other, okay, because of the uh, student complaint, for example, okay, that is the horizontal communication. Okay, they have the same, uh, what is called, it as a level of responsibility and authority, they sama. Okay, so it's like the kind of horizontal. Horizontal communication is like in more fluid and different. Dependent on cross individual communication. Ia lebih banyak dalam term kita lebih lebih senang untuk dia komunikasi. Okay, and then typical example. Okay, what is the example of horizontal communication? Okay, for example, is uh, business manager of different department, HR marketing also. Okay, sama juga. Ia juga ya, juga. Okay, that is an example. Yang nak apa juga boleh. Okay, so that is horizontal. So that's it. So how about diagonal? Okay, diagonal. So when employees of different departments that have different level of communicate with with each other in respect of the chain of command, communication between a floor manager and a sales team is a prime example of diagonal communication. Okay, diagonal maksudnya Contoh, head of department uh, department lain, head of uh, department marketing contohnya. And then dia, orang uh, department lain, okay, dia, uh, apa yang kata, um, make a diagonal communication. Dia tak kira uh, levels. Okay. Dia different level. Siapa pun boleh buat komunikasi. Okay, antara orang atasan dengan orang bawahan daripada department lain from different department can also have communication so that we call it as a diagonal communication ok, dia tidak ikut pada level, sama-sama level bukan, itu horizontal okay, dia tidak ikut kepada bawah ke atas bukan, itu uh, downward, okay, dia tidak bawah ke atas itu bukan, itu upward, tapi lebih kepada diagonal, siapa-siapa boleh Orang atasan kepada orang bawah department lain, okay? Ataupun orang bawah kepada uh, manager ke manager department lain, okay? That is a diagonal 
Okay, can you define the formal and informal communication? Okay, formal macam tadi lah, ada empat tadi. Okay, the first one is downwarding, upwarding. Okay, tiga, horizontal. Okay, and then diagonal. Okay. But what is informal communication? Kita sebagai uh, friends, okay, with your family, okay. The third person that is informal communication, right? So informal communication in the workplace is often called the bread bin and generally begins with employee through social relation. Okay, so the tempat kerja pun kita akan ada informal communication yang tak langsung, it's not uh, discuss or communicate about the work. Okay, the content is not about the work. Or the message of the communication is not about the word, but for your social relation. Okay, you ask about your family, and you you ask the, your friend, okay, your teammate about your their family, okay. So where is your, uh, where are you going for the holiday, something like that. That we call it as the informal communication, okay. In many cases, okay, informal communication can turn to formal communication if they are added into the formal communication information flow of a company. Okay, so kalau ikut flow saja, okay, berkaitan dengan apa yang you nak communicate tu, information dia adalah konteks dia adalah berkaitan dengan kerja that is boleh jadi formal. Okay. Informal communication is considered effective as employees can discuss work related issue which saves the organization time and money. Kadang-kadang kita nak discuss isu berkaitan dengan kerja juga. Okay, tapi dalam uh, dalam uh, keadaan yang santai. Uh, okay. Contoh tanya, esok kau kerja ke tidak? Uh, okay. So kadang-kadang uh, benda tu adalah Benda berkaitan dengan kerja tapi kita buat dia cari sebagai informal communication. Okay, itulah yang dikata efektif sebab dia akan um, apa? Kata, uh, save the organization time. Maksudnya tak buang masa lah. So, kita nak tanya dekat WhatsApp lah kan. Kita nak tanya dekat email awak bekerja tak hari ni. So itu akan lebih mengambil masa. Okay. Time tu, uh, money tu maksudnya maybe kena buat. Uh, kalau nak buat betul-betul formal communication, nak discuss tentang kerja tu, maybe kita kena panggil semua orang datang meeting so nanti boleh impact kepada uh, production ataupun productivity of the uh, company. So, okay, tu yang dia kata sekalau secara informal communication, kita boleh cerita tentang sedikit isu berkaitan dengan kerja, itu boleh jumatkan masa dan duit. Okay. It also helps to build more productive and healthy relationship in the workforce. Okay, kalau lah, okay, if you want to happy, to be happy working in the, uh, in your work environment, kena healthy maksudnya, tak terlalu stress. Okay, so kita boleh uh, ketawa sama-sama dengan kawan-kawan sekerja, okay, kita boleh uh, sharing makanan ke, for example, okay, jangan terlalu stress. Kita okay, akan So, bila you tak stress, you akan lebih product. Okay. Dengan adanya informal communication. Okay. So, let's look at the difference between formal and informal communication. Okay. Okay, the first difference is about the reliability. Reliability. Okay. Reliability for the formal more reliable form as there is a paper trail. Maksud paper trail tu ada evidence of the communication lah. Okay. Kalau formal, for example, if uh, the organization having a management meeting, okay. so every management meeting should have the minutes. Uh, that is the report or paper trail of the communication, formal communication. So, but for informal has comparatively less reliable 
and it's very unlikely to have a purpose. Okay, tak ada lah kita secara informal kan nak tanya dia nak kerja ke tak. Ya, hari tu semalam saya tanya dia, dia kata dia nak kerja tapi kita tak kerja lah. So, tak ada paper trail ataupun tak ada evidence. Apa yang dia cakap semalam tu, dia tak ada, tak ada evidence. Okay, for informal communication. Sama lah kamu macam dengan kawan-kawan kan. Esok you datang tak ke uh, kelas? Datang, datang, kan? Contohlah kalau ada kelas dia juga. Tapi bila time esok tengok dia tak ada. Okay. So tadi secara informal ni semalam kita dah tanya dia tapi dia tak dia nak datang tapi tak ada. So kita tak ada bukti lah dia nak mengatakan dia nak datang. Nah, sebabkan kita uh, communicate tu secara informal saja. Okay. And then let's look at the speed. Okay, difference in terms in terms of speed, slower. Sometimes stealing unbearable slow is bureaucracy. Okay, for example, if you want to uh, complain okay, about the uh, something, okay, about the road, for example, okay, about the safety in your area, okay, dia akan mengambil masa yang lama lah. Okay, nak isi form dulu and then buat semua jam sheet, okay. If you want to do a formal, for example, uh, downloading, okay. Masuk so, yang uploading, uploading maksudnya. Kamu nak bagi komplain dekat pihak berkuasa tempatan. So, kena isi borang. Okay, you should uh, fill up form and then go to make appointment first and then banyak bureaucracy ataupun yang kata syarat-syarat lah sebelum berlaku ni formal communication ok but for informal very good often they is that most ah, sebagai contoh lah pengarah ok the person pengarah pihak berkuasa tempatan tu kita sebenarnya duduk dekat sebelah rumah kamu So, kamu jiran dengan dia. Ha, so, that is informal communication. Tiba you nak keluar daripada rumah, you nampak dia dekat tempat, dekat kereta. Uh, encik, encik kerja dekat uh, ni eh, majlis daerah. Contoh lah kan. Majlis perbandaran kajang. Contoh. Ah, ya yeah, betul. Saya pengarah tu je. Contoh lah kan. Contoh, contoh. Lepas tu, you kata, ah, saya nak nak bagi komplain lah tentang WhatsApp Zoom. That is informal. Okay, very quickly boleh terus ya cakap dengan dia secara informal tak perlu nak kena isi orang dulu dekat kuasa itu. So, itu adalah difference between the formal and informal in terms of speed. Okay, time consuming lebih kurang juga dengan speed. It requires a number of different process before the whole communication flow is complete. Tapi kalau informal requires very little process. Okay, that is the difference. So what else? Information flow. Okay, for the formal, information through formal communication only through predefined channel. Okay, kita kena ikut dah pada channel dia tu tentu. Okay, one by one, step by step. Kalau informal, move freely, tak kisah. Okay, tak kisah tetapi pun kita boleh uh, buat komunikasi. Kalau formal, kena ikut dulu lah. Siapa orang atasan. Pada ketua dulu, head of department, normal head of department, of department dulu. Kepada manager, manager pula inform kepada uh, director, director baru nak inform dekat CEO. That is the information flow for the formal. Secrecy of the formal is maintained with the formal communication. Okay, maksudnya bila dah formal go to one person, one person, so secrecy ataupun kerahsiaan of the information yang kita nak communicate tu lebih terjaga lah berbanding dengan informal kan. Informal communication make it up to maintain full security to its reliance on the individuals. Kadang terlalu percaya kepada orang lain atau jadi orang kejiran kita, kita terlalu percaya so rupa-rupanya dia tak dia jahat dengan kita kan. That is an informal. About the physical So next, let's look at the various effects of communication. Ataupun halangan, okay? 
communication barriers are something that prevent us from correctly getting and accepting the message others need to communicate their information to. Stop and I do. So, maknanya apa yang okay, barriers ini tak sesuatu yang menghalanglah untuk kita menyampaikan message ataupun idea ataupun apa yang kita rasa okay, di dalam communication process. Some of the examples of communication barriers are information overload. Okay, and then choosy perception, perception, workplace gossip, semantic, gender, differences. Okay, apa antara barrier-barrier itu maybe disebabkan oleh uh, panjang sangat message tu bergila-gila menyebabkan the receiver tu tak boleh faham. So, what is the point yang nak dikontakkan dan dikontakkan pada message tersebut. Okay, so let's look at the types of communication barriers. Now, barriers ni pun ada banyak jenis. Okay, kita akan tengok one by one. Kita ada berapa? Physiological, physical. Eh, tidak. Psychological, psycho. Pemikiran. Physical. Kita punya anggota badan. Physiological. Keadaan physical. Apa beza physiology dengan physical. <laughs> Language barrier, attitudinal barrier. Kita ada ah, lima perkara. Okay. Types of barrier. Okay. okay. Based on psychological barriers, okay, the psychological condition of the receiver will power how the message is received. Stress management is a significant factor here that affects our interpersonal relationship. For example, anger is a psychological barrier to communication. When we are angry, it is simple to say things that we may up to what we read and of the things understand what others are saying. Ah, contoh kalau tengah marah, okay, the receiver, the sender tu tengah marah, okay, okay, because of maybe di panas marah itu ataupun sebelum tu dia pernah dia ada kena marah dengan other person, so that the message, okay, the communication process tu ada halangan because of the anger, okay, so padahal dia nak cakap benda lain. Tetapi, dia tercakap termarah orang yang dia nak message. Okay, that is the various uh, types of psychological. Right? Dia berkaitan dengan stress management juga lah. Okay. Ataupun ada jenis yang kalut. Ha. Apa yang dia nak sampaikan message tu, dia terlupa. Ha. Ataupun tertinggal info yang penting. Okay? Itu pun psikologikal juga. Okay. Dan yang kedua, physical communication barrier. Communication is usually easier over shorter distance as more communication channels are obtain, obtainable and less technology is obligatory. Although modern technology often serves to decrease the crash of physical barriers, the advantages and disadvantages of each communication channel should be unspoken so that suitable channel can be used to overcome the physical barriers. Ni contohnya kalau uh, berkaitan dengan internet, okay, berkaitan dengan locality, okay, ber berkaitan dengan cuaca, uh, itu adalah physical communication barrier lah. Okay, sebagai contoh, di tengah telefon, tiba-tiba tak ada lain. Okay, sebab apa dalam perjalanan? Hutan. Okay, walaupun kita dah modern tapi if we go to a certain location okay, akan ada juga uh, masalah uh, kata masalah uh, connection okay. itu adalah physical communication lah contohnya connection 
Okay, psycho, uh, physio, physiology. Tadi psycho. Ni physiology. Keadaan. Keadaan receiver tu. Physical. Physiological barriers may affect the receiver physical condition. For example, a receiver with condensed hearing may not grab the stuff of a certain condition of the physical surrounding. Sebagai uh, contoh, kalau you dekat dalam kelas, eh, you tengah ada uh, buat uh, tengah online tapi dekat uh, Ruang tamu. Tu ada adik main. Ada adik kecil nangis. Ada kakak. Tengok TV. Ha, that is not. Your physiological tu tak sesuai tu. Uh, you buat kelas. Ataupun online kelas lah. Okay. Sebabkan physical condition. Bila you dalam keadaan yang uh, noise kan. Okay. Okay. Dia boleh effect ataupun. Um, jadi barrier untuk sebut ataupun effective communication lah. Ataupun kalau seseorang tu dia ada masalah pendengaran, dia contoh mengatuk ataupun nenek kita kan. Kalau if you getting older, okay. So, your hearing will uh, sometimes having a problem. Okay, tak dengar sana. So, that is some of the physical barriers. Okay, menyebabkan apa yang kita nak sampaikan tu tak tak apa mesti tak berkesan. Atuk dah makan. Ah. Jalan nak ada tu. Macam tu kan. So atuk atau penyenek tu kan. Kita kurang dengar apa dia itu. Physiological barrier. So what else language barrier lah. Ni biasa lah ni. So, language yang linguistic aptitude may act as a barrier to communication. However, even when communicating in a similar language, the term used in a message may act as a barrier to it is not easy to understand by the receiver. Okay? Ataupun kan lagi kalau kita tengok bahasa ataupun language ataupun bahasa cara typing ataupun budak-budak zaman sekarang ni kan? Macam macam itu jadi T E W T. Kita jadi Tita. Ha, ada kan? Tu budak-budak Twitter ke budak-budak a uh, WhatsApp tu kan. Budak-budak sekarang ni lah dia punya language dia tu dia tak dah ikut kepada ejaan yang betul. Okey, itu boleh menyebabkan barriers of communication. Okey. Apa message yang dia nak sampaikan tu apa yang dia nak uh, sampaikan dalam ni tak sampai langsung disebabkan oleh diri kita tak faham maksud di sebalik message tu. Okay, ataupun language kalau kita, of course lah kalau kita tak belajar bahasa lain, kita pun tak akan faham lah. Contoh bahasa Thailand kan. Kita tak belajar, kita tak boleh nak faham. Okay, that is the language barriers. And then last is attitudinal barriers. Attitudinal barriers are perceptions that stop people from communicating well. Attitude kita lah ataupun apa perception receiver terhadap sender. Attitudinal barriers to communication may affect from poor management, personality conflict and battle to change or lack of motivation. Okay, kadang-kadang kita tak suka pada orang tu, mungkin disebabkan perangai dia, okay, itu akan impact lah uh, communication kita, kita rasa macam tak nak cakap dengan dia and then rasa macam menyampah dengan dia. Uh, so, itu pun antara salah satu barriers untuk kita dapatkan good communication. Perception eh, attitudinal ni adalah perception. Kalau okay, kita tengok, uh, Seorang tu, uh, they have a, a big physical and then dark, dark skin. Okay. So, kita rasa takut. Okay. Perception kita rasa mesti orang jahat. So, dia padahal nak tanya adik, uh, kedai, kedai buku dekat mana? Dia nak tanya tu je. Tapi, because of, we afraid 
our perception kita tengok orang tu jadi macam takut so kita akan menyebabkan communication tu kita akan smooth lah dia akan ada barrier Oh, banyak lagi ha. Ada kita nak ambil sikit lagi. Lagi. Lagi lima. Okay, how to overcome. Okay, how to overcome communication barriers. Okay, siapa nak baca? The first one. Akin, baca Akin. How to overcome communication barrier. Okay. Nampak tak? Receiver. Receiver. Okay, apa maksud dia? So, explain. Explain to Kak Kong Kawan. What do you understand? Um, point number one. Uh. Okay. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So, betul. Itulah maksud yang okay? Yang maksud. So, that is the explanation for the first. Be aware of language, message and tone. So, kalau kita bercakap secara verbal, so, kita kena uh, kalau nak sampaikan information tu secara tepat, jelas. Okay? Jangan nak marah-marah. Okay? Jangan nak Perli-perli yang perli tu uh, Kita rasa tu boleh menyebabkan uh, Orang ataupun receiver tu terasa hati lah okay. okay, so let's look at the point number two Cuba baca Christina Christina dengar Sekejap yang kelas ada orang call. No? Okay, cuba Wan Kristina. Baca yang nombor dua ni, consult other business. 
pop on the shirt. Hina, are you there? Hina, where are you? Hazri lah, Hazri. Kena yang tak dengar, tak tahu. Hazri, cuba baca. Hazri, where are you? juga. Doanya pergi mana? Atika, Atika, ada tak? Hello, everybody. Where are you? Ah, cuba awak lah. Sebab tu. Dah semua orang tak nak. Tak ada. Tak ada orang kata respon pun. Tak ada feedback. So, kita cuba latihan nombor dua. Okay, so dia kata consult the before communication. So maksud dia apa? Secara overall, what is your understanding about this? Atikah? Atikah? Apa maksud dia? Consult on the before communication. Tak? Tak dengar lah tuan. Apa maksud dia? Apa yang you rasa lah. <laughs> Jadi kata consult or just before communication Maksudnya Sebelum kita menjalankan uh, Komunikasi kita Atau kita nak cerita kan Kadang kan kita dengan kawan kan okay, I, have, I have something to tell you In for the communication is Kita tanya dulu dia Adakah dia bersedia Okay Adakah uh, you ada mas Contoh kalau kita nak telefon uh, ibu ayah kita kan Hello, saya kata ibu ada kat mana? Tengah tu dia ke? Ha, mesti kita akan tanya dulu kan? That is the consult others before communication So kita tahu dulu condition of the uh, receiver ataupun orang yang kita nak call tu Okay, we know the condition of them Barulah kita akan proceed with our communication Okay, kadang-kadang mungkin orang tengah Uh, ada meeting ke, whatsoever, right? So, I have a meeting right now. So, let, can you please uh, call me later? Nah, okay, that is the contact before the communication. Nah, cara macam mana kita nak overcome communication break. Kalau kita tak tahu condition of the uh, receiver kita, itu akan menyebabkan kita tak tahu keadaan dia macam mana, kita punya communication itu akan jadi fail. Okay? Apa yang kita nak sampaikan tu, kita, kita jadi Uh, problem lah, right? that is the concept before other, uh, before communication, okay? So the third one, okay, communicate according to the need of the receiver. The center of uh, the communication should organize, okay, the formation of the message, okay, not according to his or her level, but he or she should keep 
in mind the point of understanding or the surrounding of the incident. Okay, contoh kalau kita nak message ataupun kita nak communicate dengan makcik-makcik. Okay, so kita ni adalah orang yang uh, muda sikit lah. Okay, you all macam you all adalah uh, orang orang muda, pemuda kan. Okay, muda umur uh, umur masih lagi uh, 19, 20-an. So macam mana you nak communicate dengan uh, orang yang lebih dewasa ataupun lebih berusia? Okay, kena guna suara yang jelas. Okay, sebagai contoh, kita kena tahu who is the our receiver. Okay, nak cakap dengan nenek kita, kena cakap dengan lemah lembut. Okay, kita tak nak cakap dengan suara yang kasar untuk hormat dia. That is the, uh, kita nak communicate, tengok kepada receiver. Okay. Gunakan bahasa yang sesuai untuk orang dewasa. Okay. Yang sopan. Okay. Dan kalau you nak communicate dengan, uh, tengok pula receiver. Kalau kita nak communicate dengan kanak-kanak. Tadika for example. Okay. The, uh, the kids with five years below. Okay. How you want to communicate with them? Okay. How you want to ask them? Okay. Takkanlah you nak cakap dengan bahasa yang ataupun link apa aa, dengan bahasa gaya bahasa yang susah tu yang dia tak, tak boleh nak faham. Okay, so kena according okay, how to overcome the communication barrier. You must know aa, tadi konsep dulu maksudnya tanya dulu. And then now kita tahu apakah aa, siapakah receiver kita tu. Tengok dia punya umur berapa. Okay kefahaman dia sampai tahap mana lah. So apa yang you pilih, bahasa yang you pilih untuk bercakap dengan dia kita, kita kena, ha, kena kena tengok keadaan. So that is the communication, communicate according to the need of the receiver. Okay. Janganlah kita tanya uh, budak tadika tu, okay adik, satu darat lima berapa lah. Okay mestilah dia tak tahu. Okay. At the level of the education dia yang uh, masih lagi rendah. Kalau you nak tanya sesuatu ataupun you nak komunikasi dengan sesuatu yang lebih susah. Okay. Ataupun, uh, adik, what is your phone number of your parent? Uh, takkanlah dia akan ingat kan? Okay. For, for five years uh, kid. Okay. Kita akan kena tengok dulu okay, apa yang kita simpan dulu. Before kita komunikasi. Okay, next. Last is consistency of message. The message sent to the receiver should not be self-opposing. Okay? It should be in unity with the objectives, program, policies and techniques of the organization. When new information has to be sent in the of the old one, it should always make a declaration of the change. Otherwise, it can be summed up and queries of the same. Uh, okay, sama lah juga kalau uh, in an organization, if the CEO okay, want to uh, message about the email about some of the project that we need or the staff need to do, okay, kena inform in a detail, okay, consistent maksudnya kalau hari ni punya email cakap pasal uh, tarikh Program adalah on 25 until 26 June, for example. Okay, so untuk next punya uh, email pun akan sama juga tarikh dia lah. Uh, okay, jangan tersalah pula. Tersalah tulis ke, tersalah uh, type ke. Okay, nanti akan menyebabkan uh, staff bawahan tu akan keliru. Okay. So maksud dia consistency of message. Right? So, contoh saya cakap, uh, kelas uh, hari esok MGT162, kita kelas hari selasa at 9am. Okay? So, you also kena tunjuk. Macam, we have a class at Monday, on Monday, not on Tuesday. Okay, that is uh, we call not consistent. Okay, the message is not consistent with the information. Itu akan menyebabkan dots of files. Okay. So, maksudnya how to overcome communication by 
having the consistency of the message. Okay, itu antara lima cara yang kita boleh lakukan lah untuk overcome communication barriers. Okay, so next let's look on categories of interpersonal communication. Okay, apa itu interpersonal? Interpersonal communication means communication between people. In Latin, inter means between. So, this word means between person. Okay? Communication between the person. Of course, uh, the communication between the person, right? Interpersonal communication happens whenever there are several people communicating with each other. That could mean two friends having a quiet chat, or it could mean a group of co-workers meeting up decide on how to use the budget for the year ahead. Okay. So types of interpersonal communication. Okay, we have verbal communication, written communication, communicating with gesture, lip reading. Okay, ni cara apa types of interpersonal communication lah. Okay, between each other. Dancing, okay. Dancing is also communication, okay. Interpersonal communication, giving gifts, subtle bit sign, okay. Are you busy? That is our seven types of interpersonal communication. Okay, the first one is verbal communication. Okay, macam biasa lah, speaking and listening to our interlocutor. Is a vital form of interpersonal communication. So, kita bercakap lah. Okay, dengan seseorang, okay. So, that is a verbal communication. It's made up not only of the words we speak and their meaning, but also our tone of words. Calm, gentle, excited. Okay. Kadang-kadang ada perkataan, kalau kita sebut uh, based on uh, different term, dia akan jadi uh, message yang disampaikan tu akan jadi berbeza. Okay, for example, perkataan makanlah. Okay, kalau kita buat uh, ton suara secara tenang dan lembut je, makanlah. Jemputlah makan ataupun makanlah. Ataupun dengan cara yang marah, makanlah. Ha, macam berbeza kan? So, apa yang uh, input ataupun uh, Uh, message tu, dia akan jadi berbeza based on the voice of tone of voice suara kita tadi. Okay. Dia akan jadi orang receiver tu dia akan jadi uh, feedback dia berbeza lah. Okay. So dia akan, oh kau ni marah ni ha. ataupun, ok terima kasih ha. So apa feedback yang receiver tu akan bagi based on apa yang kita hantar tu sender tu kita hantar, tone of voice tu perbezaan tu. We can communicate verbally in various contexts. Two examples are face to face and on the phone. Okay, face to face, and the phone on the phone. Okay, that is a problem. Okay, written communication. We can communicate with our friends and colleagues either formally or informally in written. We can interact with others using text message in a spontaneous and informal context, or we can sit down and write a long and much edited letter to them. What are you see? Okay, contoh kita dengan kawan kita nak curi, nak tanya dia okay, nak tanya nak ajak dia pergi makan okay. that is informal this point is uh, where are you now let's go for a lunch at uh, 11 12 to 10 for example okay or you want to communicate with your uh, friends okay based on To discuss about the group uh, assignment. Okay, that is informal. Okay, formal. Uh, discuss, discuss is a formal. Uh, okay, ataupun tulis surat. Okay, that is a formal. Okay, and then the third one, communicating with gestures. Our gestures and our body language can enable us to communicate with others. Whether we want to or not, without us having to say or write a single word. So, maksudnya, gerak badan pun adalah satu cara komunikasi. Okay. Kadang-kadang suara kita, for example, like, uh, 
uh, police traffic. Okay. Police traffic tu macam mana dia nak suruh orang, kalau contohlah kita dekat uh, jalan yang ada traffic light, okay. warna merah, tapi kita nak suruh orang tu jalan juga. Macam mana polis itu? By your gadgets. Okay. Dia akan uh, tu, uh, gerakkan tangan. Okay. Jalan, jalan. Okay. This is what means as a jalan. Okay. Takkanlah dia akan sebut pakai suara pula kan? Secara verbal. Okay, jalan, jalan, jalan. Tak ada kan? Okay. So, dia akan guna gadgets ataupun gerakkan anggota badan. Okay. Yang dia sebut tangan ataupun dia jom bisa. Alright. So, itu adalah gesture lah. Boleh jadi sebagai interpersonal communicating. So, apa lagi yang guna gesture? Kalau yang bisu, okay, dia tak boleh nak cakap, kita tak pun guna bahasa. Isyarat, okay. huruf A, huruf B, okay. Akan ada dia punya gesture dia lah. Okay. That is also interpersonal communication. Okay, the fourth one, leading and uh, lip reading. If you can read people's lips, you will be able to interact with them without sound. Okay, sebagai contoh. Kalau you tengok betul-betul lah muka saya ni kan. So you can know uh, apa kalau saya tutup microphone. Okay, saya nak awak uh, guess apa yang saya cakap. Tolong. Tolong. <laughs> ha, apa yang saya cakap tadi? Based on my gesture. Lip reading tadi. Gesture pula dah. Apa yang saya sebut tadi? Kalau you tengoklah saya punya muka ni kan. Kamera. Apa yang saya sebut? Ha? Saya cakap seorang lah ni. <laughs> okay lah, tak apalah sebab kita dekat online kan susah sikit kan Okay, saya cakap tolong for the first word is tolong Okay, and then the second word bye bye <laughs> Maybe mulut saya ni tak <laughs> Tak sesuai agaknya, okay? So, uh, by the lip reading, we can actually understand okay, what people say, okay? So, maybe disebabkan line ni kan, ni macam lambat-lambat sikit kan? So, you all tak boleh nak catch up to lip reading saya. Okay, so by lip reading also, that is the interpersonal skill. Okay, you will not even be able to dis decipher what they are saying. During a noisy party, now when the ah make it difficult for other people to communicate verbally. So contohnya kalau kalau lah you are pergi party lah kan, dekat pak tu semua kan bising dengan suara yang uh, kata apa tu? Uh, the surrounding okay, the environment is very noisy okay dengan suara uh, music okay. So, apa cara dia nak communicate? Dengan lip reading lah. Okay. Lip reading. The next is dancing. Ah, apa kena mengena dengan dancing kan? Boleh. Daripada dancing tu kita boleh communicate. Whether you are dancing for fun with friends or whether you are professional dancer who interpret complex emotions through body movement. There is no denying that dancing is a positive, typical way to interact with others. Okay, kalau kita nak dancing untuk interact the people, okay, to come with us, okay. Macam mana cara kita dancing tu kan, ha. Ataupun, ha, kalau kalau professional dancer tu, dia memang akan, okay, setiap uh, cara dancing tu, ada dia punya tema dia. Okay, ada cerita di sebalik. Kalau you tengok lah, kepada professional dancer tu kan. Ataupun ballet punya dancer tu, Uh, mesti setiap belly dancer tu dia ada mood dia kan. So dia nak mood sedih ke, mood happy ke based on 
dia akan interpretkan what the emotions okay through the dancing okay that is also the communicating interpersonal okay interpersonal communicating habis ada lagi giving gifts giving someone a gift is a super way of showing that you care about them that is an interpersonal communication and communicating in a way that can often be more powerful than words okay so action is louder okay apa kata action is louder than words okay maknanya uh, action is speak louder than words so apa yang perbuatan kita itu akan menjadi orang kata a good communication lah okay berbanding dengan kita cakap sahaja Uh, contohlah, I love you. Okay, you said to your girlfriend or boyfriend, I love you so much. Are you, uh, are you sure you love me? Yes, of course. Okay, so if you love me, so give me birthday present. Ah, something like that, kan? Okay, so itu adalah some of the interpersonal skills kita bagi interpersonal communication. Okay, if you give a gift of flower. You can use uh, the so-called language of flowers. Okay, the idea that each flower has a specific meaning to communicate to friends and loved ones. Okay, kalau kita bagi untuk, okay, we give the flower to our loved ones, okay, your boyfriend, girlfriend. Okay, we usually, okay, uh, orang yang jual bunga tu dia, dia kata nak bagi siapa, okay. Nak pilih warna yang macam mana. Okay, so kalau warna merah, lebih kepada girlfriend or boyfriend lah. Kalau warna kuning, for example, for friendship. Okay, kalau warna putih, apa pula maksud-maksud dia ada putih. Ada maksud-maksud kalau kita bagi bunga rose, based on the different colors. Okay, they have specific meanings of it. Okay, you all cari lah dekat Google. So, this is one of the interpersonal communication okay a thoughtful gift is a brilliant worthless way to communicate so many different positive emotions everybody in this world okay uh, <coughs> like to feel very happy and got to bahagia okay so kadang-kadang cara untuk kita uh, appreciate okay appreciate someone okay by giving the gifts to our parents for example okay kita boleh bagi hadiah because of kita rasa appreciate to them all right that is also interpersonal okay. so now the seven this and the last one is subtle sign sometimes all that is needed is a slightly raised eyebrow or a first mouth and we can communicate volumes okay facial expressions slight gesture and other very subtle signs are all ways of communicating with others that human use very often. Okay, these subtle signs are often used alongside other forms of communication such as speech, dance, or gift giving. Okay, so subtle sign ni maksudnya kita punya ekspresi lah. Okay, kalau you rasa gembira, okay, so you akan smile ataupun buat buka, buka happy, okay. Contoh, saya gembira hari ni ada this, ada kelas, lecture class. So, saya akan senyum, happy, okay. And nak cakap dengan you all, nak nak uh, teach you, okay. So, ataupun, <coughs> kalau kita nak marah, so kita akan uh, angkat eyebrow kita. Uh, raise eyebrow, okay, atau buka mulut besar-besar, haa, uh, marah. Okay, that is, uh, some of, uh, kita rasa satu sign ni boleh memberi ataupun Uh, express our emotion. Okay. Itu pun antara salah satu interpersonal skill. Okay. So tak contoh kalau kita buat speech. Okay. Kita kena ada juga subtle sign. Kita punya ekspresi muka. Takkanlah kita nak nak bercakap tu kan muka kita muka macam nak tidur je. Hello. Good morning everyone. Okay, so kita yang dengar pun, kita akan rasa boring kan? So, satu sign pun antara satu sign tu. Kata, uh, interpersonal. Okay, yang kita selalu 
selalu saja kita kita buat every day, okay? So that's all for communicating ataupun communication. Okay, is there any question regarding uh, interpersonal types of interpersonal communication class? Okay, so before we uh, end this class, okay, actually, I already give you the tutorial for chapter 8, okay, in your group WhatsApp. So, please make sure, okay, uh, you do the tutorial after this, okay. So, next week, we will discuss on the tutorial, okay, for your ITM student, please look at the you future okay and then just answer the question in the you future okay before that i want to show you some of the videos in the youtube regarding the uh, communication chapter communication okay